I'll give it 20 more seconds. The suspense is killing me, bro. <laughs> oh, done. Welcome to the family, oh, man. Happy to have you part of the family. Boom. Boom. All right. All right, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be reviewing my closed call, my sales call uh, recording that I closed last week for $11,700. This is literally the first time I'm hearing it, so I'm excited. Um, it, it's always nice to go back and hear your own sales calls because it's a whole different game. You actually being on the call and then kind of stepping out and watching yourself um, execute all you know your sales strategies your techniques how you flow with the conversation a good outside perspective of, of how you're doing without further ado let's uh dive right into the sales call yeah and i just want to add that listening to your sales calls is a, a game changer because you can see where you actually paused where you actually made a joke um how you related how was your energy how was your enthusiasm because a lot of people think they have high enthusiasm great energy and then they go back and listen to their calls and they're like oh shit i sound like a a dead fish i promise you that 20 30 minutes that you'll go back and listen and reflect will pay you back tenfold yeah so let's dive right in hey christopher yes rome here how are you oh uh, this is rome how are you can you hear me okay? Hello? You got Chris? Yes, I can hear you now. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm a more creative way to get more deals to the pipeline. So that's, that's what motivates me. So he realizes that there's more creative ways to do real estate other than him doing it by himself. So he already sees the value of mentorship. You're looking for more creative ways to get more leads, right? Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, all right, so, so, uh, yeah, so. Uh, and what I like to do, if you guys notice, I like to, if I want my prospect to expand on what they just said, I like to repeat the last few words that they said and then stay quiet. And then as you can see, your prospect will expand by themselves. The wholesaling is one went away, but that's only one way to actually, uh, you know, acquire property and to make money from it. But there's other more creative ways to do it, like the subject two that you that you talk about. Um, so that's the reason why I decided to uh, make the appointment. Okay, understood. I uh, would love to ask you just a few questions, get to know you, your goals, what are you looking to do here, and if I feel like I can help you, I will uh, show you how. Okay. Here's where I set the agenda. I let them know I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, see if or how I can help you. And if I can help you, I'll show you how. Is that okay? And then I get permission to ask questions. Okay, this is where, uh, this is your opportunity to take control early on the conversation, letting know your prospect, letting your prospect know that you're about to ask him a few questions and you're going to be in control of this conversation. Amazing. Well, what do you, what do you got going on right now for work anyway? And now I dive into situational based questions, okay? Now I want to get to know what they do, what they got going on, uh, just get to know more of the situation, uh, build some rapport, and find some pain points. Oh, well, I'm a project, project manager for a health tech company. Okay, How, how's that going? Well, it's working off, so that makes it easy. Okay, good, that's a blessing. How long have you been doing for? Been doing that for ten years. Yeah. Ten years. Wow. Okay. And how's how's that experience? Oh, this company's been up. So what's what make you uh, like? Have you done this before? We just thought. No, this is my first time. So I'm, I'm an open book as to like how to get this done the, the correct way. So I get to know what he does. How long he's been doing for? Doesn't seem like he wants to talk too much about it. Um, so I changed the subject and asked him if he's, if he's done real estate before. The reason why this is a very important question is because when you ask somebody, have you done real estate before or have you done e-commerce before or have you done whatever it is that you're selling? 
whatever industry that you're working with. What it does is it makes you look like an expert in your field by just asking that simple question, right? Have you done real estate before? And they're like, no, I actually have it. Now they look at you as an expert in that field. It's very subtle, but very powerful. Okay, uh, welcome. Welcome to this new world, man. And I know you guys can't hear it, but I ask him, why are you looking to get into real estate specifically out of all the other industries that you can actually choose instead of real estate? The whole point of this is because I want him to sell me on why he wants to do real estate specifically and not e-commerce or not some other, not trading or not marketing. Why do you want to do e-com? Uh, why do you want to do real estate? And they will just sell you on why do you want to do that? Most sales guys would be like, oh, real estate is amazing because, you know, God's not creating more land. Real estate is amazing because X, Y, Z. You should do it because the, only millionaires are made with... Um, Millionaires are made with real estate. Like, just let them tell you why they want to do it. And you won't even have to say anything. Can you ask my real estate out of anything else I've chosen? Yes. Oh, well, real estate is, well, it's, it's always, it's, it's an old way of making money, right? It's, um, yes. It's short as other ways, there's online marketing. Um, but that, you know, those technologies change all the time. But buying and selling houses, it's pretty much the same, same process, right? <laughs> Correct. Um, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And it's something, I'm explain. Okay. Yeah, it's something that I can easily explain. Yeah, it's something I can easily explain to other people. You know, affiliate marketing and all that other stuff is hard to explain to people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even this sometimes it goes right over people's heads, but like, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's okay. As long as you understand it and you understand how to make money from it, uh, that's all that really matters. Um, so what's, I guess, what's making you, like, where does this come into play? What's making you want to get into real estate now? I, I love this question. It's my favorite question in the entire sales process, and it works like a charm. This is how I introduce urgency into the call. I tell them, you know, it seems like, you know, you're, you're working this job, and you're just looking into real estate. Why now? I want to know. What's going on in his life that, that's making him want to make a change now? That immediately, right away, puts your prospect in an action state where they're ready to buy. So watch and learn. I've wanted to get into it for a long time. I've never found like, the right uh, mechanism to do so. Um, looked at wholesaling, but it seemed like it always required to have a lot of equity in the house. You know, and, and you know, a lot of people are chasing those deals. Right. Uh, but... Yes, yeah, so, but the subject two, I don't see a lot of subject two courses out there. I haven't seen too much of that, a lot of wholesaling. Yeah. So uh, the, the subject two seems like another way to get a deal done and still make money. Yep. There's, there's a lot more There's a lot more opportunities out there where there, there, there may not be enough equity to actually do a flip or even to put it on the market, but to hold it subject two, there seems to be more deals for that. Uh, so what, what's the goal for you? Now I figured out his current situation and why we're on the call. And now it's time for me to transition to vision, right? I have a, I have a good understanding of where he is. Now I want to switch gears and talk about where he's looking to take this long term. The goal for me is to eventually quit my job um, and, and do real estate full time. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. I mean, even though, you know, I do have pretty much freedom now because I can work remotely. Um, it, it's nice to be able to control your income. You know, um, when you, when you have a job, you, the income is pretty much controlled by, you know, the, the company, but it's about how to make money all the future that way. Uh, what do you mean by that? More control your income? Well, I've got to worry about being laid off. Right? Um, mm -hmm. The economy takes downturn. I don't have to worry about it. For, like, for example, we just had a, some call a riff, like a reduction. So... When I ask them about their goal, and especially when somebody tells me I'm looking for financial freedom, most sales guys are just going to be like, yeah, financial freedom. Yeah, I know what you mean. 100%. Everybody wants financial freedom. Blah, blah, blah. And they move on. And, they, and that's surface level. Don't do that. You're not going to get anywhere doing that. So that's why I asked them to expand by like, what do you mean by financial freedom? What do you mean by you want more time? What do you mean by you want to be able to work... Uh, uh, on your own time. What would you do with the time back? 
What are the things you're able to do then that you can't do now? Try to dig deep, guys. Let us turn around that. You know, they, they did like a few people. Um, but if I had my own way of making money, like the real estate, I wouldn't have to worry about that. Yeah. Is that the, the only reason why you're getting into this? Is because you just want to have a little bit more control, like in case something bad happens? So he mentioned that he's a type of, he's a type of buyer that is motivated by safety. You'll notice that most entrepreneurs and business owners are motivated by a core emotion called status. They want status. But there's also some uh, people who are motivated by safety. They want control. And that's what's the biggest thing, it seems like, for Christopher, that he wants safety, right? It, it seems like he's worried about the worst case scenario that what if he gets laid off and then he can't provide for his family. Now let's continue. I think that's, that's, a, that's a huge motivation. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so, yeah to, to be able to control my own uh, financial destiny is, I think that's a huge motivator. Uh, to be able to, uh, uh, you know, to be able to live wherever I want, another yeah. huge motivator. Um, so you, you don't feel like you can do that right now? Like, live whatever you want? Not my current job. I mean, mm -hmm. because I can work remotely, that's great, but, but there, there is a cap on my income. The cap uh, on that. Because if you guys notice, he's like, I want to work wherever I want. I'm like, but it seems like you're already working remotely right now. He's like, yes, but there's a cap on my income. So I can't really live the way that I want to. And you guys, you guys will notice the reason why I ask him, is there anything else that you're looking for? Because people have multiple goals usually, right? And if they just met you on the phone call and you ask them what's the goal, they might not get deep right away. They might give you a surface level answer. But when you dig deep again and ask, so what else, you know, what else do you think you'll be able to do from this? And then they'll give you like the real reasons most of the time when you peel the onion, you get closer to the, to the truth, get closer to the truth. I see, I see, I see. So in terms of making, uh, like controlling income, like making more, making more money, you have more freedom, you can do more things in your life. Not, not, right. not I understood, I understood. Uh, what's the goal? Like, um, like how much would you need to be making for you to start? Be, you know, to, to do what you want to do. It's a really good question. So whenever somebody says, oh, my goal is I want this freedom, that freedom. I want to be able to buy a Lambo or uh, quit my job or do this. Those are great goals. Those are really good goals. However, now I'm trying to co-create a plan with my prospect to help them get them to their goal. So I'm like, okay, you want this, this and that. So let me ask you a question. How much would you need to be making for you to leave your job first? Because that's everybody's first goal, right? First move is to match your income, usually, and leave your job. So I'm asking him, how much would you need to be making for you to leave that job? So now I know what the figure is and how I can help him co-create a solution to get him to that goal. I'm going to actually quit my job. I mean, expect to make pretty good money now. You know, I would have to be pulling in a good fifteen to twenty thousand a month passively. Like okay. through cash flow. Fifteen to twenty thousand a month. That that would make me feel comfortable enough to say, all right, I'm gonna let go of the uh, day job. Okay. Easy. That's like uh one or two wholesale deals a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that 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 sounds like about one or two wholesale yeah, but you know, I would want to keep some of these properties right. Nice. Uh, and the reason why you, it's not expensive is because you're, you're doing this nationwide. Gentlemen, I'm, I'm reviewing my call, and then Misha always loves uh, to, to, to come and annoy me when I'm, whenever I'm trying to give you guys value. Yo, what's going on? Is this YouTube? Yes, yeah, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> is it recording up, still, by the way? Yes, it is. Well, thank God, good. 17 minutes in. What's the biggest takeaway that you've seen so far on this call? The biggest takeaway? Yeah. <laughs> Ask them, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, comment your biggest takeaway down below that you've seen so far, the one thing that you've learned, and I'll be applying it to my sales calls. Amazing. I appreciate you, Mish. All right, bro. Hi, baby. Okay. Enjoy. Here. I just wanted a sip. Thank you. Thank you. With that being said, man, uh, what, how would things be different if you're able to bring in, again, like which is not far-fetched and I see this done every day uh you know if you bring, can bring in even two wholesale deals a month make about 20 grand get yourself a property as well you know every month how would things be different what I'm trying to do here if you guys know it is I'm asking him okay once you achieve 20 grand a month and you actually quit your job 
right? Now you have your properties and X, Y, Z. How would things be different in your life? What I'm trying to do is very, very important. What I'm trying to do is making my prospect imagine what his life would actually look like if he achieved his goals using our product or service, right? Why do we do that? Because our mind doesn't know the difference between real life and imagination. Okay, so if I can make him imagine and picture what his life would actually look like if he achieved his goals, and guess what's going to happen? He's going to feel like he's already there. The feelings of gratitude, of worthiness, of joy, love for life will all arise in your prospect, and he'll feel like he's already there. And that's why it's so important to talk about their goals and have them paint the picture of what their life would look like if they actually succeeded with your prospect if they actually succeeded with your product or service? Well, I mean, then I can live in a neighborhood that I want to live in. I mean, I live in a pretty okay neighborhood now in New York City. It's not bad, but I definitely have my eyes set on a more, um, a more, a more exclusive neighborhood in New York City. Um, so it would change my uh, life in that way. It's, it's good to also have a good um, amount of, I mean, anything could happen to the family members, right? Uh, so it'd be good to also have additional again he keeps on mentioning that you know you know not only do i want to move into a better neighborhood and things like that and have a better environment but anything can happen to my family members so i just want to make sure that i have enough money that in case anything goes wrong i can i'm be able i'm i'm going to be able to protect them so safety is the core emotion that's the most important thing that this prospect wants and you have to be sure to sell them and to show them, not sell them, but show them uh, and convince them of how your product or service will allow them to have that confidence, that core emotion is going to be satisfied. Or, you know, no cap my income so that I can hope in that kind of a way. Right. Uh, it would be good to also get a family member a house in New York City, like my sister lives in Tennessee, but it'd be great to bring her back to New York. But she, I would have to like buy her something for that to happen. Right? A, that'd be great Family's thing to do. everything, man. Family's everything. Um, so, I mean, the, that, for starters, I mean, the, those are the things. That would, it would change my life. I could move to a better neighborhood. I could get my sister a place in New York City and move her from Tennessee over to New, uh, back to New York. That would be a nice thing to do. Yeah. Um, for starters, yeah. And I know Christopher. Christopher is going to do it. He's already making bank right now. And with the proper training that... Uh, I can't name my client right now, but the proper training that he's getting, he's going to knock this one out of the park. He's going to make a lot of money. And I told him not to forget about me when he does. It seems like you're not really thinking of yourself too much. You, you just want to, it's all about family, bringing every, everybody back together. That's what's important to you. Yeah, that'd be, yeah, that, that, that'd be a very important thing, yeah. You, do you have a family yourself? No, I, I'm single, so uh, I don't have children. My, my brother and sister and mom. So it's a really small, small family. Okay. Well, that's not bad. Then you have a lot of time on the This one, this, this work. I don't know why it's, why it's cutting out, but I said since you're single, that means you have a lot of time on your hands right now to put uh, towards this venture. I mean, plus, I, you know, because I work remotely, uh, I do get the call to myself. And so I want to take advantage of that while I can. Who knows about how long I'll be at this job, right? You just yeah. don't know. That's the third time he brings it up, but he doesn't know how long he'll be in his job. So he's he wants to make a change ASAP. Oh, I'm uh, 55. 55. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. So from everything you've shared with me, you've been working uh, for, 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 for some time now. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's too bad, but you just realize it's not giving the freedom that you want. And you feel like you're there's like there's this feeling, so you're not able to go and buy that house that you want, live the life that you want, bring your family together. Um, how long have you been? So, if you guys notice what I did here, I kind of recapped his situation and his goals to show him that I've been listening, because that helps build massive amounts of rapport, and it shows that I'm listening, that I actually care about him, um, and you know the only reason why anyone won't buy from you in any industry, by the way, guys, is because they didn't trust you, okay? So it's very important to repeat back what they told you, 
you know, give them a little summary of the situation, their goal, so they know that you're actually listening. And that will, again, help you build massive amounts of trust. Thinking about, like, making this, giving the freedom that you want, and you feel like you're this, like, this feeling. So you're not able to go and buy that house that you want, live the life that you want, bring your family together. Um, how long have you been thinking about, like, making this? Oh. So, I love this question. How long have you been thinking about making this change? I ask it for a few reasons, but the main thing is that to put things in perspective in front of myself and the prospect, because some people might say, well, it's been a few years. Well, that's a very long time. Now I want to know it's been a few years. That's a long time. Like what's actually been holding you back? Right. So it just puts things in perspective. About those 20, 2010, looking at it with that. And I can I mean, I've put a few online marketing to e commerce and late marketing, and, but never really had any real success with that. Um, so I'll try to go into the sports show. Okay, yeah, yeah. Again. Like, what, what's, what's kind of been holding you back all this time? So he's been thinking about this for a few years now, and, and now I want to know like, what's, what's actually been holding you back? I, I guess finding a system that actually works. <laughs> um, you know, I've tried these online systems. But, you know, maybe I need to go back to some of the basics, you know, like real estate. It's kind of the basics of making money. And so I want to give that a shot. Mm. Um, but when you say you didn't find the right opportunity, what does that really mean? Like, what, what have you actually tried? Uh, what worked? What didn't work? And the reason why I asked this, because I just, for me, uh, for the longest time, I was always held back. I've always, I knew I wanted to make a change, but I never had the right opportunity. And then I realized nobody was going to come knock on my door one day and tell me, hey, Rome, here's an opportunity for you. I had to go out and I had to get it myself. So that's why I was just curious, like, what do you feel like the biggest obstacle that was in your way so we can make sure this time around nothing is going to be holding you back? Boom. Again, so I believe, I truly believe this is one of the most important, par important parts of any sales conversation. Because if you find out all the challenges, everything that's been in their way from making a change in their life, if you really truly uncover and address everything, then guess what? You're not going to get an objection. This is your chance to completely prevent any objection from coming your way. And that's why I can't stress, always understand what's been holding your prospect back and really understand. Because he said, I didn't find the right system. I didn't find the right opportunity. So I'm like, okay, what did you mean by you didn't find the right opportunity? Tell me a little bit more, more about that, right? Because as you can see, I told him, nobody came to me and knocked on my door and gave me an opportunity. You know, so what have you actually tried? Right? So I'm challenging the prospect. I I'm, I'm really genuinely want to know like, what's been holding them back. Once I figure what, it, what that, that is, then I'm going to make sure this time around that whatever was holding them, them back in the past is not going to be the same reason what's going to hold them back today and going forward. As far as uh, online marketing, it's always, you know, for traffic, right? That was, you know, for traffic, the right track. Um, with, with your system, it seems to be different. That there's actually motivated sellers that you pre-filtered. Um, that's a big selling point, to have uh, sellers that are pre-filtered. And So from what he's saying is that he really he tried other systems, other ventures, and it, it, it didn't click for him. He, didn't, he tried other ventures, he tried other, other people's systems, and it just didn't work for him. And the reason why he's looking to us is because he loves our system, he's seen our reviews, uh, it makes sense, he thinks it's a good fit as to what we're doing and what he's trying to do. Uh, so that's what I'm hearing so far. Let's continue. You know, it, it's much easier, easier to make a deal with someone that's uh, you know, wants to sell. So I think what's, hold, what's held me back from these other, I guess, systems, um, you know, not being able to generate traffic, the kind of traffic that's needed. And, um, and so you guys will see later, I'm going to show him exactly how he's going to use our systems so that I make sure he has clarity and certainty in how our system works and how it's going to get him to his goals. I mean, what would be different about this, I think, is having that the deal bot that, you know, filters out and, uh, you know, kind of pre-negotiates the deal. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so just not having the right system. Right. And then do you feel like you need anything else from us in order to give you the confidence to be able to make 20 grand a month and not get it, if not more? 
So this is a very, also a very important question that I like to ask before I start to pitch is, what do you feel like you would need from us, Mr. Prospect, in order to give you the confidence to actually be successful and make this work so that you can achieve your goals of $20,000 a month? That's why this is a very important question to ask right before you pitch so you can use the same lingo so that it registers in their mind when you start pitching them and they're like, ah, that's exactly what I need. Well, obviously, because that's exactly what you told me you need. They're going to be like, wow, this is exactly for me. This, is, was, this product or this service was literally made just for me. <clears throat> oh, I mean, you know, part of the apprentice program, I, you know, I guess is also to, to have somebody to talk with if you know, I'm going through yeah. a deal and not quite sure, you know, which way I'm going with this one. Yeah. Um, it's good to have somebody who's done this before to um, say, oh, you know, try this. Yes, understood. Okay, amazing. Um, lovely, man. Okay, let me do this and let me break down to exactly how the apprentice works, what's involved, and then let me know if you have any questions towards the end. You got a paper and pen? This is where I've deemed him qualified and I told him, okay, um, let me break down to you exactly how our pro program works, and then you let me know if you have any questions towards the end of the call, okay? I'm not the type of sales guy who says, um, give me a yes or no. All I want is just a yes or no. I'm not that type of sales guy. I personally think that is not the right way to do sales because now you're putting pressure on your prospect to say yes or no and reminding them of the sales process, Okay. Um, a lot of guys, a lot of sales guys might argue with me, but this is how I've been doing it, and it's been working out uh, pretty well. And by the way, guys, um, I skipped the pitch and went straight to the price drop. However, keep in mind that when I pitched him, I made sure that I included exactly what he needed from when I asked him what he need from us in order to give you the confidence to be successful. So I made sure to address his challenges and make sure that the pitch is tailored to exactly what he needs so that it is a no brainer for him. That's it. In terms of the investments, uh, we don't, there's no uh, monthly fees. Uh, we don't take anything off of your deals except uh, they agreed, agreed upon half half. And it, for us, it's an upfront investment of 11,700. Boom. He dropped the price and he stays silent. Not a single word. Okay. Um, so I guess I just want to pay the fee. I get, I'll get access to the actual online training, the seven-day program. Yes, yes, that's everything. Right. Exactly. Yeah, get that out of the way. You schedule your onboarding call um, where we go over everything together, hop on a Zoom call, tell you exactly what's going to happen, how the training is going to work, um, <clears throat> um, how you're going to get the leads. It's super important after you pitch the price and they're – okay with it, to tell them exactly what's going to happen next, okay? Because they need to have clarity and certainty in each and every single step they're about to take. They don't know what's going to happen next. Like, okay, you're, you know, I'm going to pay 11700 then what's, what's going to happen? So without even him asking me, I tell him exactly what's going to happen so he has confidence in his next steps um, and he's more likely to obviously do the deal and to be less confused because a confused mind does not buy. Sounds good. Yes, I'm ready to get started. Just let me know what's next. You ready to rock and roll? Yes. Yeah, so, what comes next? If you guys notice, even though he said, let's do this, I don't just go ahead and be like, okay, let me sign you up. I always like to ask again, are you ready to get started? Are you ready to get the show on the road? Are you ready to rock and roll? Get two yeses, double confirmation. Okay. In terms of next steps, um, I mean, I'm going to take, out, take all your information right now and get the payment out of the way. Once that's done, you're going to get an email with all your onboarding steps. And Again, give him, giving him clarity on what's going to happen next. Schedule, schedule your onboarding call. Make him feel more comfortable. <clears throat> you can schedule it, I think, uh, as soon as Monday or if she's available tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. This card is the best that I just get like a voice. I don't have to speak to a card, and that's too much screw. Unless you just it that way. Yeah, 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 we, we always do. Um, so what's going to happen is that I'm going to run it through. Most likely it's going to block. 
you're going to get a message from your bank. Uh, you're going to approve it, and then we try it again. That's what usually happens. Okay. Uh, Christopher, it's up to you. If you like it, we can give it a shot, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, then we can try to figure it with the bank. Uh, Christopher, are you excited, man? No, it's not that. I, I would be uh, bouncing off. Give me the microphone. Give me the microphone on the phone. On the phone, that doesn't sound that great. I don't know. <laughs> so, whenever you're pitching a price, when it's a, a big investment, a lot of the times there's a lot of tension on the call. And I like to break the tension by cracking a joke, letting up the mood a little bit. So, what I said here was I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I'm like, hey, Christopher, you don't sound too excited. You're about to take a step to change the trajectory of your whole life. I would be bouncing off the walls. <laughs> I think Misha took a video of me uh, closing this deal. If I find it, I'm going to put it on the, uh, on the video so you guys can uh, check it out. Uh, loading on my end, but uh, DJ does that for a little while. Give it a second. I'll give it 20 more seconds. The suspense is killing me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Welcome to the family, oh, man. Happy to have you part of the family. Okay, amazing. When you sign the agreements, they will be taken through the rest of the onboarding. Uh, they'll be taken through the rest of the onboarding process. I'm looking forward to seeing you in, and I hope you achieve everything you've set up for yourself and more, my friend. Good luck on your venture. Yeah, sounds good to me. Thanks, bro. My pleasure. I'll talk to you soon. Ciao, Christopher. All right, bye. Right. Boom. So as you guys can see. It was a great conversation, very short, about 25 minutes. Closed $11,700 in a single phone call in under 25 minutes. Uh, made 10% off, of, off of that. And more importantly, potentially changed the whole trajectory of Chris's life. Okay? I think it was a good conversation, great conversational flow. The only thing though I believe that I could have done better is I could have definitely related to him more to build more rapport because I could have definitely related to him when he was talking to me about his challenges and his obstacles, um, how he didn't find the right opportunity. I could have definitely shared a story where I was in the same position he was um, to give him hope that it is possible. Because why do we say stories? Why are so stories so powerful? Because they give hope right they give hope that if somebody else was in the same position that i was and there was a fork in the road and he was able to overcome it and he was in the same situation that i was then i can do that too otherwise i think it was a pretty good call short and sweet uh made a thousand and seventy dollars in under 25 minutes with which i think is not bad it was beautiful and that was before noon that's the live call analysis analysis review i hope you guys enjoyed it um, comment below, like Misha said, what did you learn? What was the biggest takeaway from this call? And I will see you guys in the next video. Ciao.